All right, all right, all right. Boop. So, I think last we left off, uh, oh dear God. I don't really care about syncing as long as my files are fine. As long as I can keep hold of my save files, I'm okay. I actually really don't care about syn uh, cloud sync. As long, yeah, as long as uh, my computer saves my files, I'm fine because I don't think I'm going to be changing computers anytime soon. At least not for a while. Also tomorrow, I'll be able to make a decision on whether or not Yeah, make the decision whether or not to, I will buy a new desk. Because I've been talking about buying a new desk. And now... I can, uh... Tomorrow. I'll look... I, I will start looking into it. I will start looking to see if I want to buy that desk or not. Alright, so... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump on in also. Boop. Yeah, there was a question mark here, so. I think I've done this before. Anyways, I don't, oh, I only have five of those, so I think we'll go ahead and uh, blank. Oh, it's a nice world. Yeah, I've been here already. Yeah, I've been here already. Okay, so there's nothing of real interest here for me. Have I already been in here? No, oh, I don't think I have. Oh! That's what these are. Oh, they're... Okay. That's what these are. These are, uh, 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 rumors. If I recall correctly. Rare find, so... Yep, they're rumors. Stuff I really don't care about. Okay, I need to get over here to deal with that. There's, um... Wrong one. Hmm. Complacency. How's my complacency here? Uh, I... That's... Uh, I think I'll... Uh, four... Yeah, okay, we'll be fine. Yeah, I need to get to you before I can finish anything up on you. So I need to get to Vavos 4, which was where? Here? 
Yes. There's also Outcast Studi found the world where the Eldari are stranded. Uh, the rogue trader er, must visit Dargonis in order to assess the situation on the capital world. Okay, we will definitely do that. Uh, the door. Adir has earnestly requested that the rogue trader explore the Cronus Expanse. We're doing that. Uh, ah, yeah. Ah. Uh, located. Uh. Charge of the Tempest. Okay, so essentially. There we go. All right, yeah, like. That's all done with now. Okay, so we definitely need to get over here, so we'll just make a... Um... I mean, I could technically create a... Uh, but I don't want to use up all my all the last of my navigator insights, so I actually so I don't mind actually carrying her uh, carrying on about. We'll probably actually eat, uh, get on. To, ooh. Oh, so I probably actually want to save up for that. I'm gonna save up for getting to that. All right, so. Uh, Nani? Oh, Cassia! Good thing I saved! And it's not voice acted, of course. <clears throat> Zircon, how wonderful it is that I have found you here. Uncontrollable anxiety washes over your body, causing you to lose your breath. Cassia notices this, closes her eyes, and you are released from the grip of emotions that are not your own. Please forgive me. My powers are sometimes too ins instant, insistent in their attempts to break free from my control. You have made great strides in learning how to keep them at bay. I commend your perseverance. I came to deliver good tidings. I have spoken with the house's navigators for the uh, through the atlas. Of late, I can feel the increasing clarity of how our connection is growing stronger. Despite the dissident and the descent in its mist, House Orcelia has been able to keep a precarious equilibrium. Thanks. And thanks in part to your unexpected arrival on Aravac 5, and the resolution of the conflict at the Dargonis reception. Not all Orcelios concur with your decisions, but none can deny the impact that you and no one else have had on the house's present state of affairs. Cassia nods gravely, lowers her gaze, and clasps her hands together. There is more I wish to tell you. It is about the visions that I have come to experience at an increasing rate during warp jumps. The same visions come to me again and again and again. It is as if I am going mad. For you see, these visions are about me, the Atlas, and Tisiphone. Or, uh, Tisiphone or Celio. I'm pro I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, for you... Uh, the house's previous na uh, navator. I have seen Tisiphone's. Uh, uh, Tisiphone? Uh, is it Tisiphone or Tisiphi? Uh, Tisiphone. Tisiphone or Tisiphone. Anyways, uh, experiments. And T's experiments. 
uh, the ones that involved the navigators from the uh, set hollow branch, which she was rumored to have destroyed for disobedience. But the visions told me an altogether different story. One where the settlers helped Tisiphone create the atlas, and they vanished immediately after the experiments were done with. Perhaps I can... No, I know I know I can find the way to the palace of the atlas. If I recreate Tisiphone's journey from my visions... A real place, not the psychophysical illusion to which the Orsalio navigators can reach out. I've always had a feeling that it truly exists in our world. Now, however, I know it with uh, I know it with absolute certainty. I've been informed that House Orsalio will soon con uh, convene its Grand Council. Would it not be better to wait for it uh, to finish first? I cannot t uh, shake a certain foreboding about the upcoming meeting in the incorporeal palace of the Atlas. Troubling mirage, uh, mirages have plagued my mind for many nights now. Voices calling uh, calling, and cursing my name. And the more I use the Atlas, the clearer the visions become and the louder the voices grow. And the further my powers wane. I am certain that all, all of the house is experiencing the same. For all of us are connected. I can sense my family's fear. House Orselio is doomed to perish in darkness should I fail to discover the reason why Atlas is weakening. And that reason, I believe it is hidden somewhere in my visions of Tisiphone. It makes you so sure that you will find the way to this physical manifestation of the Atlas. I saw Tisiphone's experience on, uh, uh, experience an epiphany in a dream, just like my visions came to me on our travels through the warp. She beheld a planet behind a uh, hidden behind roiling warp stones. The world promised, promised her great power, so Tisiphone gathered the Sithalus, her most devout followers, to go on a suicidal journey through the Tempest. I know not the details of what happened on the planet, but it was there that the Satellists sacrificed themselves for an experiment of some kind, and it was there that House Roselio obtained its stairway atlas. For the first time ever, I have an opportunity to find answers to the questions my mentors so deftly avoided. Why did Tisiphone choose me? What is the Atlas? Is it true that House Orselio's past is drenched in blood? Please do not snap this tautly drawing, uh, drawn string of destiny. My destiny. Journey with me to Tisiphone's wake to the distant stars. And why, pray tell, should I go into the suicidal escapade? I, my house has nothing more to offer you. Perhaps the palace of the, uh, Cassio bows her head much lower than, than what the dignity of one of the net. Okay, so she's pretty serious about this. Perhaps the palace of the Atlas, uh, power, uh, perhaps the palace of the Atlas holds a reward that will surpass all our expectations. Perhaps we will discover nothing more than the great ash of disappointment. And yet we have awakened all a long road together. Side by side, I surrender myself to your magna uh, magnanimity for the last time. I shall help you. The house is still watching me. Both are renegades and the loyalists. I doubt that any of them will agree even to a brief armistice for the sake of learning the truth about the Atlas origins, and I do not wish to see House Orsali lose even one more life to another uh, fratricidal skirmish. No. I shall go. Uh, I, shall, I shall go out of the answers about our past on my own. Then it is best we go alone. Uh, Cassius' shoulders relax a little. And thank you for your understanding, Rogue Trader. And now, permitted to make take my leave, I must start preparing for the journey. From what I have been able to glean, we must first travel to the 
the Orcelio prophecy system. Odd that... Uh, odd that. Could it be that the historical records are lying? And claim Orcelio is not whom the star system is named after? Either way, that was the system from which Stephanie embarked on her journey, and we are going to follow in her long-forgotten footsteps. Cassie intends to recreate Tisiphone's... Okay. All right. Let's see how she reacts if we pick one of the other two factions between the Renegades or her house. Because she it looked like she relaxed a little bit from just us going. But I am kind of curious as to see what else she has to, uh, what, what her other reactions are. She's like, okay, which reaction do I like the best? But I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm still going to end up going with my first choice. Huh. Okay, so she didn't exactly care about that one. It just had to take a little bit of convincing on my part to uh, get her to agree to it. Okay. All right. Yeah, I like my I like my I I like my first. That's like Let's just go out alone. Let, then let it just be us. We can handle it. We can handle it. We don't need anybody else. <laughs> <clears throat> so he says. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we'll we're we're just gonna go at it alone. She doesn't want to involve the renegades, which would put us at peril. Uh, and she doesn't want to harm her house. 
So it's like, okay. Perform the ritual. Okay, so let's look at that one again. Uh, can recreate Tessavini Zorcelio's rituals from her visions in order to find the way to the physical palace of the Atlas. Oh god, that's right. I like how's my inventory looking? Ah, uh, cluttered as usual. As usual. Your ship sports a multitude of peculiar colors. It is most exhausting. Right here? Are you sure? <laughs> you may, Lord Captain. Okay. So that was definitely a new one. Now I'm kind of more inclined to go ahead and start working on that. So I think that's what we shall do. Uncharted, oh, an un uncharted area, but looks like we need to actually come from the Orcelio Prophecy. Uh, oh, I guess I need to get up there. Hey, look at that. We need to get up there anyways. So. A report from the middle deck, Lord Captain, immediately after our uh, translation, there was reports on the Vox channels of the black creatures appearing all over the palace. The witness accounts uh, claimed they emerged straight from the shadows, and it was your pet Xenos Marazze they were in interested in. Uh, several enforcers perished into the battle, but we managed to avoid significant casualties. Uh, they were mandrakes. They could have infiltrated the ship through, through the shadows. In that case, guarding the decks against every shadow will not be possible. We will strengthen the security detail at key points on the vessel and hope the incident does not happen again. Lord Captain, I bring you new information about the Xenos device that you discovered during your time away. Ever since your return, the tech priests have been making every effort to comprehend the nature of this mysterious technology, and they have succeeded to an extent. After many rituals and pleas to the machine god, they awakened the Xeno artifact. For but, for but a moment, it produced a holographic copy of a planet in coordinates that matched the location on Langren's belt. Perhaps you will wish to see with your own eyes what this uh, destination holds. Interesting.
Hold on, what? So many rumors. The Xeno Vice that just covered at home away, Emperor Sin's return. Oh, okay, so we got to go to the Langren's belt. Hmm, we gotta go to the Langren's belt for that, okay. Okay, we will do just that here in a second. An officer of the Augur team reports that this world, covered in thick forests and steep mountain ranges, is of no particular interest except for one fact. A fierce battle was has unfolded between, between a group of Xenos. Multiple, uh, multi, a multitude of, uh, of small ships are concentrated around one area, some of them heavily damaged or outright destroyed. One of the cluster of ship scanners detect a plethora of Xenoforms employing unidentified weapons and technology. Maserai supposes that, uh, that in this location, the surviving warriors of the Reaving Tempest could uh, could engage their pursuers from the other cabals that crave their deaths. The Xenos is determined to land on the planet and meet with the Drukari from this cabal. Or unceremoniously barraged into the battle. Whoever the enemies may be, the Xenos demands that the Lord Captain's best warriors set out with them. Uh, let him uh, let him take uh, let him take part. Ooh! After several long hours, Marazai shuttled uh, finally docks with the rogue trader's void ship out of the group that was sent to the planet's surface. Only did the Xenos return, covered in blood from head to toe, with a smug, uh, smug, snake-like smile on his face, having evidently enjoyed what happened. Marazai hands the Lord Captain a bloody soaked trophy. Huh. Melt again. Wait, is there nothing else? What am I supposed to do? Excuse me, chat, while I look this one up.
Okay. Well, there's nothing else there. So we need to actually go to here. All right, let's uh, hope uh, nothing happens. Oh. Incidents, uh, you failed to inform the bridge about the imminent jump. I want to know why. Uh, if servant, no, please, not the fingers and force. I'm gonna break on for every word of a lie I hear is coming from your mouth now. Talk. Uh, we performed an emergency warm shot, barely activated the Geller field in time. Uh, and are now being dragged to throne knows where. Uh, by an unknown force. Late, the Lady Navigator and the Lord Captain are still unaccounted for. Now tell me one more time what transpired in the Sanctum Novice. I also the Lord Captain in the observ um, observation chambers and yelled at the servant for leaving the shutters open, but then I was told it was on the rogue trader's orders because the Lady Navigator uh, clearly threw the arm armor glass. She was, not, she was lost in thought, staring at the canvas in front of her. Uh, soon the servants uh, were ordered to leave the sanctum novice, and the lady navigator picked up her brush. Entranced, she started dragging it across the canvas, uh, painting one image of an over another, and another, uh, an and another one over the last, and another. And then the Lord of Captain noticed there was a thing on the other side of the picture, covered in a layer of fresh blood, was coming to life. But the lady navigator was oblivious. That is one of the Lord Captain. Gave the order to shoot at the window, thus drawing Cassie's attention. And to my horror, the shots instantly shattered the gla uh, armor glass, and a few bolts passed dangerously close to the Lady Navigator's uh, Lady Navigator. Started the Lady Cassie turned around, and then the horrors and her. Painting broke free, and what happened next? I barely remembered a thing. There was a bright flash, a purple blur. I remember feeling so scared that my knees were shaking. I remember my legs carrying me away like they like they had a mind of their own. As I ran, I heard screams behind me, the Lord Captain and the Lady Cassia. They oh god emperor of the creatures, they pulled them both inside the painting. Sir Mistress Voxmaster, I have a Port that needs to be believed and delivered to the senior officers, the Lord Captain and the Lady Navigator, who were lost during the emergency warp jump. Their whereabouts are still unknown. I am sending you the interrogation uh, reports. We were. Okay. Um, no data, no data, material related uh, relation. The Lord Captain's personal account record uh, recorded by no data. No strictly classified access protocol holder for convalescence. The Symphony or Celio's ritual did not go as planned. The warp disturbance uh, triggered by Lady uh, by the Lady Navigator's trance was washed over the Sanctum Navis. The Void Ship's machine spirits reacted to the surge of the Immaterium and interpreted it as a call to action. And thus did the emergency jump into the void begin. Amid the shrieks of sirens, the clanging of, sh and sh of shutters, and the distant hum of the warped engine, some unknown will pull the Lord Captain into the Sanctum Novice, toward the creatures from the living canvas that had already ripped the Lady Navigator's throat. Horrified, almost out of breath, and struggling to scream, Cassia sh uh, stretched out her hand and began slowly sinking into her own painting. Lord Captain... Ooh.
grab the leading navigator's hand uh, to try to pull her back out. Nice. Uh, Lord, uh, nice. Okay, the Lord Captain pulled the Lady Navigator closer. After a while, the creatures eased their onslaught, and Cassia crashed into the Lord Captain, knocking him off his feet. The Lord Captain felt a sharp pain in his side as Cassia's cockat uh, brush pierced his flesh. Eee. That's not good. Uh, during the fall. A moment later, Cassia was sucked into the air and pulled inside the canvas. Instance later, the Rogue Trader himself was plunged into the depths of the world. The Lady Navigator had created. Lyricon awoke, finding himself in the middle of a gigantic, bo uh, boundless, billowing no uh, nothingness. His body felt weightless, floating in a void strewn with hundreds of the Lady Navigator's colors, some of them bright, warm, and alluring, others moros, cold, and heavy. Uh, reached out for the bright colors. They're going to plunge into a river of bright hues and flashes of rosy sunset, and lilac carried him down to the dazzling stream. Before long, the captain was standing in an uh, idyllic garden permeated with the fragrance of flowers and the singing of songbirds. Servants in the purple, uh, servants in purple, uh, livery darted back and forth, attending to withered old wo woman in a navigator's mask. Sitting on her lap and smiling coyly to everyone was a little girl with ruby eyes and white hair. Be a good little girl, my child, until the day we meet again. With trembling hands, the woman handed the girl to a navigator in a laboratory attire. I am out of time. Prepare the child for the Atlas transfer and destroy all records and mentions of the world of IRTVI. Uh, none must learn of that which took place here. And remember, her body must grow strong for it to accept my power. And once I have ret uh, returned, uh, loyalty will be rewarded. The memory dissipated in a gust of silvery wind hurled the Lord Cavan back into the ocean of nothingness. But this time, the nothingness felt dismal. Instead of bright hues, all it contained was shadows of invisible monsters swimming by, shrouded by the uh, nebulous veil. Swam toward the dark colors. Uh, gray. Grayish blue waves swallowed the Lord Captain, and the feeling of lightness disappeared as his limbs grew heavy again. Zircon fell on the fl hard floor of the laboratory, cluttered with uh, vats as tall as a human. Inside them were dozens, hundreds even, of repulsive mutants. Some had no arms, or no legs, or two heads, or no face or their innards turned inside out, but each had white skin, white hair, long clawed limbs, and ruby eyes. My lady, the child. Child is born. The tall old woman slowly approached one of the vats. Re uh, readings, stable. Mutations, none were detected at any of the stages. Genes, identical, my lady. Chances of survival, hundred times higher than any of the previous experiments. How long will it take uh, to grow this child? I fear accelerating the process might cause the body to fail. The only one after years of silence. I understand the situation, natural growth. I do not have that much time. We will have to grow uh, go with uh, the backup plan. Yes, Novator, it will be done. Memory dissipated. Close his eyes and remain to drift in the weightlessness. Zircon stayed in the ocean of nothingness, devoid of any sensation or emotion, until a slight smile upon uh, on someone's lips surfaced in his mind. The warmth of her skin and the silk of her snow-white hair. Cassia. She was there, somewhere amid the seething nothingness, all alone. Someone's scream broke the idyllic equilibrium. The lower captain's motionless body and the weightlessness released him. Plummeted into the maroon abyss, the royal illusions, but it was now in full control of his body again. Uh, the Lord Captain crashed from an immeasurable height to the bottom of a roiling abyss, and then in the next moment, Zircon saw two figures amid the uh, billowing maroon mist. One of the figures, unnaturally gaunt and tall, was clutching the other, smaller one in its claws, screaming furiously. These Victorums are very dark and awesome. 
Wow. Ugh, that's less than 50% chance. Oh, appeared in the strange room. <clears throat> I will succeed. I will succeed. Dave's coming. It's a natural thing for me. Oh my god. Safe scum is real, chat. It's probably only gonna end up being like worth like maybe five XP, which is going to be a lot. Of like, oh, so I did it all for nothing. I did it for the lore. Shut it. As Abelard always says, experience, nothing matters more. Wow, now I'm failing all over the place. <sighs> fun. Fun, 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 fun. It's my game, I'll play it as I wish. As weird as that sounds. Okay, now I guess I'm just not going to get past the first check now. succeed. I wish to succeed. Oh, excuse me. Are they ever going to come out with like a, a, a last Aslanti mode for this?
The reason why I do want to, uh, like, I actually want to succeed at this is because I actually want, because there, there always is that possibility that there might be, like, a small hidden check in there. Uh, for, uh, succeeding. Come on, game. The game really just does not like me right now. I have failed that check every time. Like, yeah, it not a 50% chance, it's slightly less, but it even so. You'd think it would have gotten it by now, right? Alright, do I have anything that has a... That might do it. That might help. Abelard would actually not fail his stuff. The game really does not like me. <laughs> he has a 65% chance now. No, a 65% chance, and now he is failing. Are you really gonna make me go for uh, skill check stuff for Abelard? Yeah, you are. Because that's now three times Abelard has failed in a row. Ah, crap, I actually forgot what I needed to look for. Oh. Oh, toughness, toughness. Abelhart, buddy. This game is straight up saying, no, you shall not fail, no, you shall not pass any of these checks.
That's it. Wow, okay. Hey, she now has a 70% chance. Okay. Oh, crap. I missed it. Whoops. All right, uh, uh, in those swirling mists all around him, Z could uh, make out human faces stricken with torment, and not just human faces, there were Xenos, Eldari, their features fused together with those of humans, which made the Crimson spe uh, Spectres look all the more abominable. Their gazes and their rage were directed at the two unmoving fi uh, figures dancing, uh, facing each other. Lord Captain... Drew closer to look at the figures. One step was all it took for the, uh, for some unknown force to notice the captain, uh, Lord Captain, seize him and drag him through the painting's twisted uh, space. Now the Lord Captain can clearly see the dark shade of the long dead navigator leaning over Cassia, clutching her neck in its clawed fingers. The shade screamed, "You were given life because of me. You survived because of me, and here you are now because I have willed it so. Bow before me." Tell me what I wish to hear, and you and your suffering will end. Go on, child. I have waited far uh, for so long. Submit to me. Cassia looked exhausted, her body covered in hundreds of the thin cuts. Her lips lacerated, her claw marks on her cheeks. Yet there was steadfast resolve in her eyes. I know who you are, Tisiphone or Celio. I know what you crave. I saw one of the visions that you sent me again and again i won't allow you i will never allow you to become me cassia's fatigue voice quivered but she was not about to yield in this battle urge the uh, lady navigator to fight the monster to the bitter end Wow! That's a check. Anyways. Lord Captain's words attracted not just Lady Cassie's attention to Tiffany Orselio, finally noticing the presence of a living creature in that at bizarre world, turned to face the interloper and the lunged forward, seething with rage. When the entity's claws were millimeters from the rogue trader's throat, Cassia opened her navigator's eye, and a wave of unbridled warp energy obliterated the spec uh, specter before she realized what was happening. The lady navigator graced the Lord Captain with a tired smile. Uh, the abortive ritual had turned out to be a trap set for Lady Cassia by the previous uh, navigator of her house. The rogue trader had ensured that her plan fell to ruin, and now it was time to desert the accursed place. Cassia took the rogue trader's hand and guided him through the maroon mist and out of the painting. Their unconsciousness, bo uh, unconscious bodies were discovered in the Sanctum Navis 20 turn days after the disappearance, as soon as the rogue trader's void ship had emerged from the warp in an unknown system. Lord Captain, Lady Navigator has been waiting uh, for you on the bridge for mm, half a watch cycle now. You see, because of her pr uh, presence, the officers... I believe Lady Cassie wishes to speak uh, speak about something very important. Her unease is spreading to those around her. I am not able to save. Well, fart nuggets.
Lord Captain, we must speak now. Cassia takes a few anxious steps around the study, then says reservedly, I have given much thought to the, all that has happened, and to us. Perhaps you do indeed have feelings for me. Perhaps I have feelings for you in turn, but we... We are not meant to become something more. A time will come when my duty to House Orcelia will call upon me, and you... You have already been summoned to your and to do your duty to the God Emperor and your protectorate. Would it not be better then if we ended things now? Before before it's too late. If I truly am dear to your heart, you will understand. Have I upset you in some way? No, that's not it. I just Have I not been convincing enough in expressing my feelings to you? Please, that is not all what I meant. It is already too late for me. I cannot bear the thought of a life without you. No, that is merely what your heart is telling you. I see human feelings every day with uh, these very eyes. Emotions are fleeting. They will, uh, they wither all too quickly sometimes. Love, fear, attachment, everything passes. Is this what you truly want? I love you, Cassie. And does it not perturb you that I am a wretched mutant? That my own subjects see me as a monster? That your servants fear my company more than facing a mortal enemy. I do not care. I chose you as you chose me. That is what truly matters. I nearly killed you. I could have died a great many times, and yet here I am standing before you. Is all this just a lark to you? Wow. Well, I think I guess things are definitely getting real emotional. I am too deeply in love with you to make light of such things. Oz, cast. Uh, Cassia looks at you with tenderness and longing, but then frowns in frustration. A familiar sensation develops on uh, uh, your being, the pain in your chest suffocating, and you fall to your knees. Why can't you understand? I am a navigator, a mutant. I'm, I'm nothing but a tool in his hands, in humanity's hands, and tools are not supposed to have feelings. Cassia sobs and rolls up one of her sleeves from her uh, clavicle to her elbow. The skin on her arm has grown so thin that you can see every vein, muscle, and tendon within. A new mutation, Z. Just look at that. In the middle of the latest warp jump, and those bo uh, this body uh, will go through even more ghastly changes in the future. I don't, I don't want you to see what I become. I don't want to see you grow to loathe my hideousness. Take her hand. Now please let me tell you about the Cassia I see. She quivers as she makes a weak attempt to slip out of your hand. Your eyes shine like rubies against 
a, a sunset sky, and your skin and hair are like fresh snow. Never before have I seen anything so beautiful. Cassia listens in silence. Her eyelashes lowered and her high uh, head slightly bowed. A barely noticeable smile tugs at the corners of her mouth. You have studied thousands of books. You wish to learn everything there is to learn. And I am dazzled by your keen mind and curiosity. Cassia listens in silence. Her eyelashes lowered. Nope. And when I t hold you in my embrace, I feel like I am home. I am... I find myself smitten with your raised chin, your refined manners, and a then stern look in your eyes whenever you scold me. Zarkon, stop. I... I hear you. Crimson tears stream down her cheeks, but she is smiling, and hers is a smile of joy and freedom. I can see your colors, so pure that I'm afraid I might scare them away. Only when I stand before you, fully dressed, do I feel utterly bare and defenseless. You have captured my heart, made me fall in love with you, and shown me how to love myself. I know not what the future holds for us. But I am willing to take a risk and find out together with you, my love. As he covers your hand with hers and her knees buckles treacherously. You are exhausted. Come. I shall lay you in my bed and stay to guard your slumber. They're gone. That's... Cassie looks abashed, but does not withdraw her hand. That sounds wonderful. No one has ever guarded my sleep before. You will be the first. Oh wow, I actually got a lot. I'm actually getting a lot of trophies in here. I have a why do I have a stuffed corpse? Um, what? Uh, okay. of peculiar colors. It is most right here. <laughs> Doing this. Boop -a -doop -boop -boop -boop. Ladies and gents, finally we can enter this area. Ooh, I like this purple. I actually really like this purple.
Oh, wait, hold on. I gotta fix your lid up here. Because I had to change a bunch of stuff. Was it that you had equipped originally? Oh, you had that. And then you had He doesn't use that very often. you have on We'll just do that for now. imprint of a long taut hand under the broken cockatoos. Experience. Nothing matters more. A job for me. An expected result. Oh, Jesus. Hold on. Let me get back. I need to get Pascal back. Oh, God. All right, uh, how much do I get? Uh, um, Where's my dashboard? Or not my dashboard, my bookmarks bar. So we're 
are we gonna want? Icon fire and eager for battle. Close communication. We'd go after that. I'm not finding eager for battle, so... Melee attacks, I don't want. That's neat. Let's just, uh, yeah, let's just do that. Compared to naval service, that was barely a challenge. My success was inevitable. Nothing's impossible for this old officer. I uh, left no stone unturned in this Eldari temple. Unexpected result. Eldari sanctum is blemished by human presence. Let us not dawdle. Up here is obviously the way we're supposed to go. So I'm going to ignore that area for the time being. Is there money to be made? Oh. Huh. Everyone knows your presence is poisoning the mind and soul of the rogue trader. One wrong move and I will end your miserable life without question. There it is, the monkey pride. You think the Elantark would wallow in darkness without you to guide him? 
but his soul shines so brightly that it will dispel any gloom, and so I do not fear your words. That's both a sla <laughs> that's a slap at as uh, okay that's that's both a slap and uh, that's both a, a, a slap and a compliment in one word, directing at two different people. I love it. <gasps> oh, I completely missed that. I have learned much in my exile. Rune statues once depicted pages with a long history of the old Dari. Chests and treasure up there. Alright, so it's not 95, so. Alright, it's not 100, so. Duty prevails. A ring weapon that fires a single plasma shot. It can only be used once per combat. Okay. Ardwer uh, and their allies are immune to damage from the wear, uh, wearer's grenades. The first time the wearer uses a grenade during their uh, their turn, they have a 50% chance not to expend the grenade. That's pretty cool. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. Another Eldari weapon. And the data crypt that I machine. Interesting. I always keep my options open. Oh, cursed child, we had to ally ourselves with the Xenos once more to stop you. And no matter, it's a small price to pay for the liberation of House of Sailor from the chains of tyranny. Begone, renegades. We follow the Atlas's call in your wake, child. Stand with us. Alistair said they will not trade to Symphony's legacy for the false ideals of blind fools. What? What is happening? Damn, Xenos, this was not the bargain we struck. Throw and smite you. A navigator whose skin is so thin that it reveals the in, uh, the muscles, bones, and innards underneath clenches his augmented gold jaw in contempt. What is this? The rogue trader and the traitors to the house have lured the child into a trap set by Xenos? I wish my eyes were deceiving, but now I can see clearly that great Regent Arantos was right to send us after your vessel. I, too, wish to be enlightened about what is happening. You will stop defiling the remains of the hollow ground of our ancestors with your semblance of speech, monkey. The final act will... Oh, the Harlequin's bright clothes uh, glimmer faintly under the dim light of the system's star, and the sinister grin on his mask only adds to his menacing and aloof presence. The final act will soon unfold where you will pay for the deeds of your ancestors. Stay put and wait for the puppeteer to pull at your strings. Why are there Xenos ruins where the palace of the Atlas should be? Why is this place coated in the impenetrable black mist? I, I'm suffocating. 
Uh, three eyed monkey who sees into the shale. The taint of your ancestors has begun to consume your body and soul. Pathetic fools with an un with an insatiable lust for power that is not yours. Ending your misery will be merciful. Taint? You mean the Atlas? Oh. The Atlas Trader Atlas is a sacred relic of House for Sale. It is what elevates us above the rest. What is this place? We call planets such as this one crone worlds. They came to be long they came to be long before my time. Uh, back when all the Aldari were a united people whose empire stretched from one edge of the galaxy to another. It is a world beneath Earth's uh, first stars. An unblighted world. I never thought that I would come to find one. I have nothing to add to the outcast's words other than my eternal astonishment at your curious trope, monkey. So what is this taint you speak of? Do you not see it? When you, monkey, discovered this crone world, you tainted it with your crude technology, despoiled it out of its relics. Ruined all there was to this last stone. But worst of all, you sullied the souls of your ancestors reposed in their sacred vessel, the spirit monolith. The atlas is a, is a Xenos artifact. Huh. He points his thin finger at the remarkable crystal floating behind his back, and the harlequins around you tighten the grips on their weapons. Like a sea of bottomless blue, Cassia looks around with her uh, oh, with a stunned expression, her gaze shifting from one Xenos to another. I did not know that uh, living things could exude such saturated hues. I wish I could paint this ocean a different color. Examine the hovering crystal. Ooh. Now, the enormous translucent stone shares a strange resonance with this place. You can sense the energy emanating from it. Myst and mysteries, uh, mysterious, rest uh, restless, co uh, coagulated. It resembles a giant heart that has been plucked out of its inner owner's chest. Its crystal clarity is pierced by hundreds of dark veins that have uh, taken root within like a terrible illness. How do the navigators of House or Sailor taint the spirit monolith? The experiments. This is where she conducted her experiments, to Siphony. No, it is not possible. To consult with Xenos is to violate the word of the God Emperor. It is known to all the, uh, that to Siphony or Celia executed one, uh, uh, one, anyone who showed any interest in the enemies of humanity. Is that so? Then why is it that every piece of metal or fabric in this place bears our house's coat of arms? Open your eyes. Quiet. The Harlequin's tone is mild, but it is not a request. I am unsurprised that the truth is hidden from your gazes. A three-eyed monkey who see into Shale and Shael. I realized it at the, I realized it the moment I met the first of you. Wretched, uh, begging us to help you destroy your own kin. I sensed it within you. Our ancestors call, their pleas, their endless torment. I knew that what you found was a crone world, and I humbly waited for the day you would lead me to it. What is the meaning behind your words, Athair, uh, uh, Trope Master? You know the answer already, Outcast. You have always known. You're lit. So that is why. That is why your presence makes my soul shrink to the size of a uh, river peril and my throat choke in a collar of th uh, thorns. That is why your words seep into my soul like poison, leaving wounds that will not heal. There is a shard of the spirit monolith inside you, monkey. Twisted, perverted, invigorating you by making ancestors suffer. Oh. Alas, you are right, outcast. The ancestors of the third-eyed monkey sought to command the power of the spirit monolith, and yet they suffered uh, failure time and again. Eventually, they discovered a way to harness this power, a terrible way, torturous and unforgivable. They shattered the monolith into many shards and uh, weakened the souls within. And then, then they placed the shards of the monolith inside of their bodies to empower their abilities. I never wished to learn such harsh truths about my own house.
Neither Theodore von Valencius nor Tessifnia was infallible, but that doesn't mean we are powerless to rectify the errors of our ancestors. You say that only because you wish to soothe me. No? You, you are more than just a tyrant's heir. You are a successor to a mad heretic, a betrayer of the faith. You must be destroyed, you and the Atlas, once and for all. You think the solution is so easy, don't you, Monkey? When you die, your souls become captives inside the spirit model. This process is deranging to our ancestors who have served as the modelist guardians for aeons. It is equally agonizing to the souls of your de and dead. And the more monkey souls the monolith absorbs, the more volatile it becomes. The Eldari and the monkey have spent many a dance battling for supremacy within the monolith, and its integrity is waning. You sense it too. The only way to free our ancestors from the pain is to separate the monkey of taint from the spirit monolith. My troop is here to perform just that. We all will pay our parts today. Or play our parts today. When the final act of this age-long tragedy begins, the monkey players will exit this world stage. Cassie is the inheritor of the one who bound the spirit monolith to the navigator's body. Uh, body. Listen to what uh, whatever she has to say. She is not the woman her pro uh, predecessor was. Cassie gives you a grateful nod and turns to the Harlequin troop. I cannot change the past. It is true. Nor can I change the fact that my house is forever tainted with, with disgrace born of Tisiphanes or Celia's hubris. Yet all of us here today have the power to change the future and hold the unending suffering that is drowning both your kin and mine. You? You suggest that the monkey and the Eldari change the future together. I must admit, my lady, I'm confounded by your audacity. Go on. My Atlas. Uh, Cassia places a hand on her gilded press plate. Uh, if you can free the phantoms of my house from the spirit model, guide them to enter my Atlas. Uh, their experience of wisdom will help steer House Orselio onto the path of truth and truth and allow future generations to avoid the calamities pitfall of their forebears. Okay, Morag, my eating lady, the shards of the monolith are lodged inside the chest of every monkey bound to you by ties of blood. How exactly do you intend to return them? I shall use the Atlas to sever my subject's connection to the spirit model, and then I shall extract its charge from every navigator of House Orselio. This artifact is implanted at birth, but, the de uh, but that does not mean that the ritual cannot be reversed. I witnessed its creation through Tessiphany's eyes in my vision. I lived it over and over again. The, the memories of the Sethala uh, 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 clan, I... I can recreate the ritual that will return the souls of your kin to you and save my people's lives. Cassia, are you really capable of this? I am con confident in my abilities, more so than ever before. Okay, there is another path, my lady. Here and now, cast your house's trouble aside. Be with me for as long as the stars allow us. Why is that one there?
Why is that an option? Huh. Okay. Anyways, uh, that's not... Okay, now I need to look this one up. Chat, if you... Uh, you know what? Uh, uh... This one's slightly confusing. Hold on, chat. Hoping I'm not screwing anything up. Okay, I gotta check something. Because now I'm slightly confused. Because I'd really, because, like, I am definitely one of those persons who's like, I, I don't want to screw things up.
Hmm. Anyways. Um, seldom do humans and Xenos get the chance to resolve their conflicts without violence. I second the Cassius proposal. The Harlequin remains as still as a garish statue for several minutes. Then the mellifless uh, uh, voice behind the mask says, I am willing to try, monkey. No. I won't let you destroy the Atlas, even if it's the child's wish. Lady Orcella, you are too young, inexperienced. You simply cannot comprehend. You address the future Novator of House Orcelia, one who survived the massacre of Erek V, who has lived, follow, uh, who has lived following an attempt on her life at the Palace of Dargonis, who has restored her house's uh, stability in what scant time she has been free while you, all of you, have spent years destroying it from within. You address one who has passed through the tempest of the Sea of Souls to the true Atlas as a rogue trader's ally, yet still you call me unworthy. Don't you, young? When experienced, kneel before me and I shall forgive your insolence. Now, Sir Silly was always loyal to Novator to Sivani. Henceforth, it will be loyal to her successor, even if you see fit to lead us down a different path, my lady. Are you done with your performance, Monkey? Then stand aside and do not interrupt. Ah, I can feel it again. The tranquility, the ancestral souls have found peace, and corruption no longer endangers the monolith or this world. Remember our agreement, Cassio Orcelia. We will soon meet in this place again so that you can give us the shards. And now, be gone from our world, monkey. Okay. I, uh... your wits about you. I kind of like that. Error. Making adjustments. Wait. Lord of Xenos is 137. Why did it use Pascal's?
Um... What is it? I sense something nearby. Too hard for a simple monkey? A staff of Orselia Novator. Ooh. Eldarius God once walked among them. Hold on, chat. My success was inevitable. Why did it use Pascal's? Lord Xenos at uh, that time. That doesn't make any sense. Well, hopefully that wasn't too important of a... Uh... I always have a backup plan. Do 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 do. Time to have a nice, good old chat with our lady friend. Oh, how nice of you to grace me with your presence! I was just thinking back to our journey to the palace of the Atlas. That is, to the world of Xenos. <laughs> Remembering that most reckless act has enveloped my mind in a whole palette of hues. But when I think of the great risk you took for House Orcelios and my own sake, an azure shawl instantly descends on my shoulders, and amber sparks flash inside my soul. Please accept my sincerest gratitude. So now you are the full-fledged Navator of House Arcelia. You of all people should know that succession is a lengthy and tiresome process. <sighs> While my entire house is busy preparing for a grand council at which I am to ceremonially inherit the late Tisiphone's title, I have decided to remain by your side. To relish just a little more of this carefree liberty. For as soon as I am summoned to do my duty, we must say our farewells. What? What? What awaits the navigators? The Xenos have managed to free the souls of our ancestors from their confinement. The memory and wisdom of those that came before us will serve our house, helping build upon the ruins of the present a firm foundation for generations to come. I believe in that, as I believe in the divine light of the Emperor. So now the entire empire, uh, power of the Atlas is in the Novator's hands? I suppose so. If by power you mean priceless knowledge. As for the special powers granted by the Xenos souls, the navigators of House Orcelio will once again have to contend with their own bodily and spiritual limitations. However, I am undaunted by the prospect, for our line and our gene have never been weak. House Orcelio will succeed, and soon we will rise again, draped in white and gold. Of course. I will try to answer any question. Right here? Are you sure?
Did I screw something up? I might have screwed something up. Hold on. Now I'm slightly confused. I am slightly confused. All right, all right, all right. I'm getting all sorts of confused here. Like,
Do 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 do. That was weird. Oh! Oh, so basically what ended up, ended up happening was... Ah, oh, okay. Oh, I was expecting. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Do 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 do. <sighs> of course, that's. Okay.
Do 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 do. I'm following kind of a guide here, y'all, so uh, bear with me. Take care of this real quick. Looks like I did things correctly. Oh, maybe I can. I guess she just leaves? Argenta, tell me, how do you call the heart to humility when it is overcome with jealousy and doubt? Fill your soul with pure love for the God Emperor, and all doubts of the heart will at once be hollow. Do 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 do.
Okay, I'm, I do apologize for like wasting all my time on doing all this stuff, but this is just me trying to figure out Okay. Okay, so... Weirdly enough. There is another path. Uh, my lady, here now. Cast your house's, uh, tro uh, house's troubles aside. Be with me for as long as the stars allow us. The time is exactly right. Renounce your house that sees you as nothing but a spiritless child and an enemy. Let the Atlas, Atlas act as your shield, for neither the Xenos nor the Navigators will risk threatening you, knowing that you can destroy the spirit monolith with your mind. You think the uh, you think you can threaten us, foolish monkey? Okay, so this is actually a more. Hmm. I do, as uh, you are well aware, it is what you all fear. Convoys causes the Harlequin trope to tense, but she does not notice, for she only has eyes for you. I do not want to be afraid anymore, Z, or to serve the house that has betrayed me time and again, and that has used me for, as a soulless puppet, as Tysiphanes' uh, obedient su substitute. I am leaving. Leaving with you, Z. I renounce my Novator's title. What driver? Uh, drive. Uh, trouble. You are the sacred child. You cannot desert your house. Surrounded by the navigator's groans, the Harlequin pre uh, presses and holds a button on the strange device in his hands. His play has dragged on long enough. It is time for the closing scene, Monkey. For too long have we searched for this world, and the shard within the three eyed monkey's uh, and three eyed one's chest, the uh, first of the tainted shards, and we will give this world back to the souls of our ancestors. Cassie the clutches her breastplate and stifles a cry of pain. How can you control my atlas? You decided to not make the use of the charm that could inhibit Cassia or Celio's power. Uh, star, uh, yours, uh, uh, Karamek, the star of our play is even more brazen, uh, brazen than I thought. Begin your last dance. Xenos scum! You don't belong in this galaxy. This was your last line of the play. Well.
let's see how this fight goes, and then I'll just make my decisions. It's like, maybe the first one was actually the better one. Anyways. Hold on. Hold on. This is a boring stream, I apologize. <clears throat> However, uh... I'm reading like a lot of Reddit stuff with like people are very torn about this. Apparently she has the 
or not so great at It is so confusing. It's just like, I want the good ending. I want our good ending, but apparently there probably isn't. Let's see how this fight goes. This is not actually how I would actually go about this fight. I go about this. I probably would be like, uh, well, This is this isn't actually how I would actually go about this whole thing. Her parting ways with us. It's probably the best option for us.
My dear friend, today you have a particularly bright glow of jade and gold around you. Right here? Are you sure? Doing this. My dear friend, I have enjoyed. Greetings. Okay. Will we carry on? Because. I, w I I do apologize. We went through all of that. Kind of for nothing. And I apologize. I very much apologize. Do 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 do. One second. I might be getting some new info. Actually, 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 actually. Oh, balls. Do I got to do this again? Let's do this again.
I'm just going to ignore all that. Do do. Always keep your eye on the price. Ah, okay, Mistress okay. Ellie. That's not what I meant to do. Yeah. Sorry. All right, we'll just go from here. I have learned much in my exile. Rise to the top or get left in the dust. Indeed. Now I'm better at searching. A trivial task. Ke Morak. A toppled pillar. Okay. Now I just gotta go and grab all this loot again. My success was Is inevitable. Be because, you know, <sighs> I continuously reload all the time. Compared to naval service, that was barely One and a challenge. It's done. Experience. Nothing matters more. He is not wrong. He's not wrong at all. Anyways, uh, okay, guess so... I better myself through my service. Yoink. All right, now let's go. Let's get out of here. I always keep my options open. Ah, 
Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, now things are back to where they should be. Yoink. Right, so we don't need to go... those directions. Oh, right. I need to talk to Cassia again. me with your presence. I was just thinking back to our journey to the Palace of the Atlas. That is, to the world of Xenos. <laughs> Remembering that most reckless act has enveloped my mind in a whole palette of hues. You of all people should know. The Xenos have managed to free the souls of our ancestors from their confinement. The memory and wisdom of those that came before us will serve our house. I suppose so, if by power you mean priceless knowledge. As for the special powers granted by the Xenos souls, the Navigate... Of course, I will try to answer... Right here? <laughs> Alright. That's really the best I'm gonna do. Okay, um, I need to go up to here and take a uh, check on my area. So this. I'm kind of I'm in the system, so why isn't it? There we go. Boy Scout ship has arrived on the college's orbit. Uh, having returned from a long expedition, their hold is filled with trophies, and their Prometheum tanks are nearly empty. Sell them, uh, sell fuel to them. Oh. I 
How much uh, Xeno Xeno tech do I have? Twenty-seven. Oh, uh, I think I'll be okay. Profit factor is at almost almost two hundred. Uh. Nice. Okay, so this is the last one I needed to do, and then I... Until, like, I guess the last chapter... I just need to get that up. All right. Uh, I guess... Oh. There's a lot of... Uh... Whoa. Yoink. Ne uh, negating 12 points of damage on the port and starboard and 5 points of damage on the... Vides of uh, uh nah. Wow, I don't have any components here. Oh, jeez. To any new uh, ship battles yet, so. Oh, how that's gonna go. Oh, excuse me. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Okay, so my uh, fellow ship of the void, basically, I need to get that up to like. 40, uh, 41, oh, a high margin. Oh boy. That's it. Wow. I might as well grab all this stuff because, uh, why not, right? a sniper it is um it's not better but I'll grab it in. I'll grab you in. 
focus melt uh melt a gun. Hmm. We'll see if that's better than uh Grenades! Reject the flesh. Sure, that's a Pascal item. Uh, the An ally under the effects of the wearer's break their ranks ability gain a plus one bonus to deflection for each enemy adjacent to this ally. Oh. Who has that uh, uh, other heavy bolter? Oh, it's uh, them. Wow. Apparently I've got a long way to go to before I can even get up to there. <sighs> well, because in all honesty, I think they're the only ones I actually care about getting any more reputation with. But there is a weapon that I did get for Cassia. Oh. Ah, here we are. Uh, the first use of each uh, navigator's You know what? Boom. There we go. Plus 20 will. Plus 20... Uh, plus 15 perception. Difference... Oh. It's only... Oh. So far, it's much better. So far. All right. Okay, allies... Okay, from her... Current ability, allies gain a uh, navigator's perception and bonus additional MP on their first turn. I really like that. Allies targeted by innovator towers gain plus nine bonus to all their characteristics until the end of the navigator's turn. The bonus stacks and is prolonged until the navigator's next turn every time it stacks. However, her, this one is the first use of each navigator power in combat costs one mi minus one less AP. Okay. Uh, enemies targeted by navigator power suffer a minus 10 penalty to all of their characteristics until the end of the navigator's next turn. This penalty stacks and is prolonged until the navigator's next turn every time it stacks. Uh, allies targeted by navigator's powers gain plus 6 bonus to all their characteristics. And it's a plus 20 will and plus 15 perception. Hmm. Ooh. Oh. That's good. I like that. I like that very much. But I will miss the extra movement. Like, what's their perception? Oh. Jesus. So everybody technically gets a plus nine from this? Uh, plus Navigator's Perception bonus additional MP on their first turn. But it's just their first turn. What's Red Crystal Staff? Uh, uh, the first, okay, so, uh, the first use of an attacking navigator power per turn does not set the power on cooldown. It does not count towards the attack. Oh, uh, eh. You know what? Yoink.
deals an additional 33% damage to Jukari weapons. <laughs> nah. Yoink. Okay, let's level. Oh, well, let's again level Pascal back up. I actually don't care about that. What else is, uh, extermination? Huh, but uh like my persuasion is already like insanely high. <sighs> and uh I'm gonna have to go ahead and call it a stream, y'all. <laughs>